While Canada's most iconic wild salmon run, the Fraser River Sockeye, was collapsing, with possible links to the mainly Norwegian salmon farming industry operating on BC's coast, Canada's Department of Fisheries and Oceans was in Norway, promoting the industry. My fellow ministers from Brazil, from Canada, Chile and Scotland, welcome. Federal Fisheries Minister Gail Shea defended the taxpayer-funded 50-person junket at Aquanor, the world's biggest fish farming trade show. I'm here in uh, Norway to support our aquaculture industry in Canada because it's a very important part of our economy. Meanwhile, diverse groups of Canadians, including the ecotourism industry that depends on the health of wild salmon, warn of mounting economic impacts from the loss of this vital resource and scientists and conservationists speak to its catastrophic ecological consequences. The independent scientific community speaks with a single voice on this issue that industrial scale salmon farms in British Columbia are indisputably linked to the decline of wild salmon populations, full stop. Sea lice, waste and other impacts from open net salmon farms are taking a heavy toll on the marine environment and wild salmon, the linchpin of BC's coastal ecosystems. If the salmon disappear along our coastline or are greatly diminished, we're going to see a tremendous loss of many of our icon species such as the grizzly bear and the eagle. I attended Aquanor in the beautiful city of Trondheim with the Global Pure Salmon Campaign to discuss the impacts of the industry on wild salmon screen my short documentary on the subject, and document the controversial presence of the Canadian government at this event. The festivities were kicked off in high style by the King of Norway, who toasted the 30th anniversary of the trade show, which has grown to include some 400 exhibitors and 15,000 visitors, evidence of the massive scale of this multi-billion dollar industry. I am truly impressed by the huge developments which has taken place in the course of these years. Your Majesty, can I present you The Pure Salmon Canada? Campaign presented a letter to the King on behalf of countries suffering from the industry's impacts, urging Norway to address their concerns. The gesture made headlines as the lead story on the national evening news, tarnishing some of the luster of the event's opening day. The campaign also presented a petition with 16,000 signatures from Canadian biologist Alexandra Morton to Canadian Fisheries Minister Shea, urging DFO to follow the law and protect BC's wild salmon from salmon farming. Morton won a landmark legal victory earlier this year at the BC Supreme Court, forcing the Federal Fisheries Agency to take up its constitutional responsibility to regulate fish farms. And this is really just the beginning of the next step and it takes me back to where I was 18 years ago when I found problems with fish farms. I went to the Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada and asked them to, to deal with the industry and now they will have to. Former DFO senior managers like Otto Langer have been highly critical of the department over its stand on fish farms. I left fisheries in great disillusionment in 2002 and I have seen no improvement. Uh, there's a great conflict of interest within that agency. They are promoting fish farming, and yet they have the Fisheries Act, which says they have to conserve and protect fish habitat and protect wild fish. When I visited DFO's booth at Aquanor, I was first harangued by industry lobbyists who could often be seen mingling with government officials. Then I had this exchange with DFO's manager of aquaculture communications. Do you want me not to film this delegation here at all because you can't control the message that I'm going to use this footage for? Is that what you're saying? I don't know how you may choose to misrepresent this. What if I'm just this? accurate? What if so, I'm just simply accurate about the concerns of the... Then perhaps you shouldn't be so combative. You're the one that came up to me and asked me to not film anything and, and, and I'm simply presumes asking to be able to dictate how you're to me going to, use the to control my footage. Who's being combative here? I later arranged for an interview with DFO's Director General for Aquaculture, Trevor Swerdfager. After rescheduling once on me, he eventually cancelled. I later learned he was called to support Minister Shea in talks with the Ministers of Fisheries from the other countries attending the trade show. I did, however, manage to speak to the Minister herself briefly. I'd like to ask how you respond to some questions about the optics of this trip in light of the situation with the Fraser Sockeye right now and possible links to the salmon farming industry. Well, I think the optimum word here is possible. Um, 
we have to do, uh, and we are doing continually, science on salmon in British Columbia aquaculture as well as, uh, as wild salmon. So uh, we don't have any uh, uh, concrete analysis of what has happened in the current, uh, with the current salmon run. So it's too early to tell. Uh, I'm here in uh, Norway to support our aquaculture industry in Canada because it's a very important part of our economy. The message to the Canadian Fisheries Minister that she heard loud and clear from 16,000 people yesterday with Alexandra Morton's petition was that um, the Canadian people, the British Columbian people, want the Canadian government to abide by the law and uphold the law on salmon farming. At the moment they're bending over backwards to accommodate Norwegian companies operating in British Columbia. Before leaving Norway, I spent a day on several famous salmon rivers in the region, speaking to conservationists who have been fighting to protect what remains of Norway's wild salmon population, which has already been decimated by the industry. Unlike Canada, Norway has moved to protect some wild runs by creating no farm zones in several important fjords, like the Trondheim region where the trade show was held. The city of Trondheim still has some wild salmon running through it, unlike most of the country. I spoke to this fishing lodge owner who echoed the concerns of his counterparts in Canada, Scotland and Ireland, who have all seen wild salmon populations collapse at the hands of the farm salmon industry. They come here to try and catch the famous big Norwegian salmon. Outside the boundary of the National Salmon Fjord, there is uh, massive activity with salmon farming. And this is uh, areas which the wild smolts have to migrate through. So. Uh, there's still a big risk of them being infected by too many sea lice for them to handle. I find myself spending a lot of time doing conservation work instead of running this lodge because I see that it's vital if this lodge is to operate in the future. It remains to be seen how DFO intends to deal with the crisis on the Fraser and whether it takes seriously its renewed responsibilities to regulate the salmon farming industry and protect wild stocks. The ministry's booth at Aquanor was filled with propaganda touting a, quote, sustainable industry that few in Canada aware of its impacts would recognize. The term sustainable salmon farming is an oxymoron. It's, it's a complete uh, joke to call open net cage salmon farming on migratory corridors for wild salmon sustainable. For those holding out hope that DFO will come to its senses and do its job to protect wild salmon, this pro-industry junket certainly didn't inspire much confidence. This is Damien Gillis reporting from Trondheim, Norway and Vancouver, Canada. I, I, I didn't hear any of that. Combative. Okay. And, um, and so I was just simply asking him questions okay. because in this day and age, in terms of, you know, 24 hour news cycle, yeah. I don't know if he's going to be posting things to YouTube yeah, no, 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 or no. any of that.